Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Um, and very good afternoon, good evening. Okay, so um, um, so how are you today? Uh, expecting you have taken your lunch um, right now. Okay, so now we will present to you uh, about the title. Uh, this is about the prophet and knowledge. Okay, so a simple uh, title. The prophet and knowledge. Yeah. Okay. So simple. Okay. So let's move to the next agenda. Yeah. Okay. So, um, when we talk about the title, so we need to know the definition behind the title itself. Okay. So the first one, definition of knowledge. Okay. So I separate the definition of knowledge into two parts. Okay. And uh, the one is definition of knowledge. Um, in terms of we call it uh, in terms of language or in Arabic, filugha, uh, filugha term. Okay, and the second part is definition of knowledge in Islam, uh, which is istilahin fil uh, Islam. Okay, definition of knowledge. So there, um, I use two references uh, in define the terms of knowledge uh, in language. Okay, so the first references is from the Oxford English Dictionary. Okay, so uh, Oxford English Dictionary stated that um, knowledge is the facts or information and skills acquired by the persons through experience or education, uh, the theoretical, practical understanding of a subject. Uh, the key one underlined is about the facts, information, and skills acquired by the person. Okay, so that's from the Oxford English Dictionary. And then we move to the second references uh, that I get from the Britannica Encyclopedia. Okay, so Britannica stated that the knowledge is the awareness of familiarity gained by experience of person, of person, uh, of facts. Okay, so that's from Britannica. It's about awareness, about experience something of facts. Okay. So, okay, you can read about it, definition of knowledge. Uh, also, we can, in simple definition, we conclude that uh, synonymous to awareness, to consciousness, to realization or perception of information. Okay, so it's also about an information, understand of skills that human can um, through human intellect and nature itself. Okay, so yes, uh, yes, don't pening pening, don't pening pening. Okay, we move to the definition. Next definition, which, which is about the definition of knowledge in Islam. Okay, in Islam. so in Islam, we call the knowledge itself as an 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 an. Okay, so the an an, um, uh, we um, I come out, I come out with um, three. One, two, three, yes, three. Three, we call it as the scholars, three scholars of Islam, which is about, uh, Al, from Al Qadi Abu Jabbar, Imam Ghazali, and Ibn Sina. Okay, so the first one is from the Abdul, uh, Al Qadi Abu Jabbar. Okay, so Al Qadi Abu Jabbar stated that um, knowledge is the element that brings peace uh, of mind and strong conviction and belief in special men. That's from Al Qadi Abdul Jabbar. Okay, so the keyword is bring peace of mind, strong conviction, and belief. Okay, and then we move to next scholars of, of Islam, which is Imam Ghazali. So Imam Ghazali stated that knowledge is the realization of things that make uh, that make us realize of something, uh, and in other and in other what we call other keywords is about the agreement with the facts. So you can read about it, the realization of things. Uh, means realize something through nature and understanding and in agreement with the facts or through nature that's from Imam Ghazali okay we move to the last scholar that I took from definition of knowledge in Islam which is from Ibn Sina okay so Ibn Sina stated that knowledge is understanding or discernment of something which is actually the reality reflecting or representing itself in the intelligent which has been constantly observing what it is uh, so it's a bit about the definition is a bit intellectual uh, high requires high level thinking of other so you need to think more about it and just understanding the keyword that i have highlighted okay so next yes, which, which is about the, the significance of acquisition of knowledge in islam 
waktu itu uh, in Islam uh, there are a lot of proof that Islam is really 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 stress uh, out in uh, about the knowledge itself so according to Safi 1996 from his um, journal uh, Islam is a religion based on knowledge okay so uh, now we look to the slide in Quran the word alim alim uh, has uh, in 140 places al uh, in 27 times uh, and uh, the total number of verses in which al and its um, derivatives and associated words are used in 704, 704 times. Wow. Okay. So the end of knowledge and its tools such as book pen, column across in two places, al in two, two, three, zero verses, and other words that are associated with writing a cure in 319 verses. Wow. So, yeah, it's a big amount. So the proof that Islam is really um, stressed out about knowledge itself. Okay, so we brought a few examples from Quran. Okay, we have two examples. One from Surah Al-Mushadalah, verse 11. And one is from Surah Al-Sumar, verse 9. Okay, so from Surah Al-Sumar, uh, verse 9. It stated that, A'udhu bin Shaitan al-Rajim, Qul hal yistawi ladhina ya'lamun, wal ladhina la ya'lamun. The translation means, are those who know equal, uh, to those who don't know, uh, on, only they will remember who are people of understanding. Okay, so if we look to the second example from Surah Al Mushadah, verse 11, so Aunt Mishatul Rajim, Yarfa'in Lahu, Ladina Amanu Minko, when Ladina Utu Ain Madarajats, which the translations Allah will release in the Greece to ones of you who have grief and to ones to whom knowledge has been brought so the word knowledge itself we can underline and yes we can aware that the knowledge is very important in islam okay so we have to take examples from the quran and now we move uh, to look at the examples from the hadith okay so from sahih al-bukhari um rasulullah sallam he stated qala rasulullah sallam qala bul ilmi faridatun ala kun muslim which means to seek knowledge is a sacred duty of every Muslim, male or female. And then you can look from uh, Riwayat Rumi at the Nuri. Uh, this also has stated the benefits uh, of knowledge or and the benefits for whom uh, his keen knowledge and strive to, uh, what you call it, and strive. Um, to seek knowledge. Okay, so yes, uh, that's all from me. So thank you so much, everyone. You can read uh, the slide again. So we move to the uh, next presentation. Next presenter, okay, has it? Okay, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullah, Barakatu, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Wassalatu, Wassalamu ala Ashraf al Anbiya wal Mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Hi, everyone. My name is Hazim, and today. I will continue to present our topic, which is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and knowledge. Okay, we have come to our subtopic, which is emphasis and building culture of knowledge and literacy. Before we go throughout this topic, let us understand the term of it first. The term emphasis and building the culture of knowledge and literacy means a particular importance or attention is given to create the way of understanding about a subject that you get by experience or study and the ability to read and write. The process of development will take a long period of time and the implementation is widely spread and applied to a group of people. Okay, how profit peace be upon him culturing and emphasizing the knowledge and literacy? Is there any specific way? Is there any sophisticated way? Okay, let us see the ways of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, there are basically three ways the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to culturing and emphasizing the knowledge and literacy. The first one is conveying and teaching the Quranic revelation. The second one is that the encouragement from the Prophet's tradition, which is al hadith, and the num number three, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam becoming the icon itself and role model in both knowledge 
and morality. So, uh, it is uh, the best guide and sources of inspiration for implementing the knowledge and literacy to the Arabs. Okay, the first point, conveying and teaching the Quranic revelation. As we know, Quran is the first spark of learning and literacy among them in the uh, in the time of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the Arabs. Quran also encourages people to think and respect knowledge and make distinction between those who are literate and those who are illiterate. This is because Allah subhanahu wa taala raised their uh, ranks, people who have knowledge. They are higher in degrees from those who don't have knowledge and illiterate. Okay, Quran also broaden your viewpoint towards learning and seeking knowledge. Since the first ayah was of Al Quran, started with Ikra bismi Rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read. So it shows that the first step of learning is to read, read and read. The second point is the encouragement from the Prophet tradition, which is Al Hadith. There are many Hadith that state the advantages of seeking knowledge that attracts the Arabs. Such as Man sarika tariqan yaltamisu bihi ilman sahala Allah lahu tariqan ila al-jannah wa inna al-malaikata la tada'u ajnihataha li talib al-ilmi radhan bima sana'a Number two, Islam makes it a religious duty upon Muslim to seek knowledge Talabu al-ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim Seeking knowledge with the intention of benefiting oneself and the people also rewarded like performing additional prayers or fasting the third point is becoming the icon and role model in both knowledge and morality. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is the first teacher to the Arabs and Muslims with his wisdom, struggle, sacrifice, and noble attitude that the Arabs and Muslims can continue to rise up, building the Muslim civilization. Imagine if Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam faltered and gave up back then in his da'wah of Islam. Nothing can be achieved by Muslim until today. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also with the highest quality of moral, become the role model in life. As one of the messengers of Allah's goals is the fulfillment of the moral code. وَمَا أَرْسَلَّكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He continuously displays his akhlaq that makes him be respected by his friend and also his foe. Okay, my friend, let us start questioning. What is the impact of... Uh, emphasis and building culture of knowledge and literacy. Is there any impact from it? Is there any upcoming from it? Is there any benefit from it? Or the efforts of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our prophet, is just useless. It's nothing. Okay, let us see. There are too many impacts of emphasis and building culture of knowledge and literacy. The first one is Muslim civilization advanced and made many new discoveries in every type of knowledge as in literacy, science, physics, in many various fields of knowledge. The second one is Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam successfully transformed the life of Arab community from jahiliyah to a civilized Muslim nation. From the bad habits such as killing their daughter, gambling, drinking alcohol, to a higher level degree of knowledge, it is very hard to change this kind of bad habits that they've been doing it for a long time. But with the prophet struggle and sacrifice, nothing can be can't be changed. The third is the massive expansion of Islamic empire that conquer and liberate two third of the world. It is a fact that stated in the history that there are many non-Muslim countries are, are following up, are waiting to be liberated and reached by Islamic Empire. Why? They are non-Muslim. Why are they waiting for Islamic Empire to liberate them? Because uh, this is because of two things. The first one is because they were uh, interested in Islamic justice and equality. The second one is because they were a bit oppressed for a long time by the cruelty of their king and monarchy system. Okay, the second, uh, the next one is the birth of many Muslim scholars and scientists who had great achievement in different, different branches of science. As we know, the famous, uh, the famous Ibn Sina and Al-Khawarizmi in their, uh, in their field, uh, Ibn Sina in the medicine fields and Al-Khawarizmi in mathematics and astronomy. Among uh, Ibn Sina's famous book uh, works is the Book of Healing, 
a was philosophical and scientific encyclopedia. His book, The Canon of Medicine, was used as a standard medical text at many universities in Europe until the 7th centuries. Al Khawarizmi, as we know, with his familiar, famous familiar algebra that we, think we still use it to solve mathematic problems until today. And the last is there are thousands of inventions and technologies from the Muslim civilization that have more connections than we can possibly imagine to our modern societies nowadays. The inventions such as our modern camera nowadays, who created it? The first one who created camera is Ibn al-Haytami with the obscura camera that leads to our uh, modern cameras nowadays. Hi guys, so let's continue with the next slide, which is Institution of Knowledge during the time of the Prophets. Okay, before that, let me introduce myself first. My name was Ra'ari bin Sharifuddin. My metric numbers 182640 and 03. Okay, if you guys can see at the slide right now, you guys can see two columns that have been told uh, two different places that have been reached by our Prophet to spreading his da'wah and two methods have been have been used by our prophet to speak his da'wah okay let me speak in Malay uh, if you guys can see Mekah and Madinah uh, kedua-duanya telah dipergi oleh Nabi Muhammad SAW untuk menyebarkan da'wah akan tetapi ada perbezaan cara dalam penyebaran da'wah tersebut di Mekah Nabi menggunakan dua cara iaitu cara bersembunyi selama tiga tahun dan cara uh, secara terang-terangan selama sepuluh tahun Manakala di Madinah, Nabi hanya menggunakan satu saja, iaitu secara terang-terangan selama 10 tahun. Okey, kenapa Nabi Muhammad SAW menyebabkan dakwah secara bersembunyian terlebih dahulu? Kerana pada ketika itu, Nabi Muhammad SAW baru saja mendapat wahyu daripada Allah SWT melalui surah surah Al-Mudassir. Uh, sebab itu, Nabi bangkit dan terus uh, cuba mengajak orang sekelilingnya seperti family. Uh, dan juga kaum baiknya orang yang rapat dengannya seperti uh, Saidi Saidatina Khadijah dan Saidina Abu Bakar. Okey, di Madinah kenapa Nabi melakukan secara terang-terangan? Kerana uh, apa yang kita lihat di Madinah kedatangan Islam sangat disambut dengan baik uh, selepas penghijrahan Nabi dari, dari Mekah ke Madinah. Okey. Okey, let's continue with the next slide which is education secretly at Mekah. The place I've been chose is the Arkham. Do you guys really know the real name of Arkham? His real name is Hazar Arkham bin Abu Arkham. He also from the tribe of Bani Mahzum, and the house has been located at has been located at Safa Hill. Okay. Saya ada beberapa pengetahuan yang anda di berkongsi dengan kamu semua. Pertama adalah kamu kita semua dah sedia maklum bahawa bila kita melakukan solat fardu zuhur dan fardu asar Kita akan melakukan secara sir ataupun secara rahsia Hal ini kerana telah berlaku satu peristiwa Terhadap Nabi Muhammad SAW ketika mana dia sedang berdakwah di Darakum sendiri Ketika itu Nabi Muhammad SAW dan para sahabat sedang melakukan solat berjemaah Dan ketika itu biasalah Nabi Muhammad SAW akan melakukan solat berjemaah secara ajah waktu pun jelas Uh, ketika itu, ketika Nabi muncul surah dengan jelas, uh, suara Nabi dapat didengari oleh orang-orang musyrikin dan hal itu telah menyebabkan orang musyrikin mencaci maki terhadap uh, laungan ataupun terhadap petikan surah yang dibaca oleh Nabi Muhammad SAW. Uh, tapi orang musyrikin tidak mengetahui bahawasanya uh, ayat ini, petikan Quran itu dibaca oleh Nabi Muhammad dan mereka tidak tahu dari mana datangnya suara tersebut. Maka Uh, bila mereka mencari Allah pun turunlah wahyu kepada Nabi Muhammad SAW uh, dalam surah Al-Isra 110. Hal itu, uh, kepada, uh, dengan itu Nabi Muhammad SAW baca dengan perlahan tapi tidaklah perlahan yang dia tidak dengari. Uh, ia perlahan sehingga hanya didengari oleh diri saja. Okey, pengaturan yang kedua saya hendak uh, berkongsi kepada kamu semua adalah Al-Qum juga merupakan tempat uh, di mana Nabi Muhammad SAW melatih uh, orang lain untuk menjadi pendakwah dan men- selepas mereka dilatih mereka akan dihantar ke negara lain untuk berdakwah agama Islam. Hal ini untuk menyebarkan agama Islam ke tempat yang lain dengan cara yang lebih uh, efektif. 
Selain itu juga, uh, The Arakam juga uh, merupakan tempat yang strategik untuk menyebabkan dakwah secara, uh, secara rahsia. Ini kerana rumah tersebut jauh daripada pasar ataupun tempat orang berkumpul. Hal ini memudahkan untuk mereka melakukan uh, pembelajaran ataupun dakwah secara rahsia. Okey, uh, hujung daripada uh, hu- ketika berlaku penyebaran ini, sorry, ketika berlaku penyebaran ini, Uh, terdapat 30 orang atau 40 orang yang telah masuk Islam pada akhirnya dan Dar Alkum juga telah memfokuskan tentang uh, pengatur akidah supaya kita dapat mengenali Tuhan dengan lebih dalam ok ok so we continue with the next slide which is education openly in Mekah so this event has been done at Safa Hill ok first and foremost let me speak in Malay Okey, peristiwa ini berlaku di atas Bukit Safa ketika Nabi Muhammad SAW sedang berdiri dan mengumpulkan dua bani iaitu Bani Ali dan Bani Fih. Maka telah datang orang-orang Quraisy untuk mendengar juga pesanan yang ingin sampaikan oleh Nabi Muhammad SAW. Dan tidak lupa juga Abu Lahad dan juga pemusat-pemusat Quraisy juga turut datang untuk mendengar pesanan tersebut. Okey, sejurus semua orang tiba di tempat perkumpulan itu, maka Nabi Muhammad SAW berkata, jika aku cakap, jika aku memberitahu kamu ada sekumpulan tentera berkuda ingin menyerang kamu, adakah kamu percaya? Maka mereka semua berkata iya. Hal ini mungkin kerana Nabi Muhammad SAW tidak pernah menipu dan mendapat gelar Al-Amin. Dan juga jika kita dapat lihat bahawasanya orang-orang Quraisy sanggup menghantar wakil mereka untuk mendengar pesanan yang ingin disampaikan oleh Nabi Muhammad SAW. Hal ini membuktikan berapa pentingnya pesanan Nabi Muhammad SAW. Dan juga selepas itu, Nabi Muhammad SAW juga berkata Aku adalah peringatan buat kamu sebelum tibanya sisaan, sisaan dari Allah SWT okay. Bila Nabi Muhammad SAW berkata begitu, maka Abu Lahab telah menaikkan suara dan dia uh, berkata Celakalah kamu uh, Muhammad kerana telah Celakalah kamu Muhammad kerana kamu telah memanggil kami ke sini. Okey, sejurus dia Abu Lahab berkata begitu, maka turunlah surah Al-Masad yang tabsyada Abi Lahab bi watab itu sehingga habis. Maka turunlah ayat itu untuk uh, celaka terhadap Abu Lahab kerana dia telah mencelakakan Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okey. Apabila mulanya seseorang Abu Lahab itu mencemooh atau memaki Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, maka orang-orang Quraisy lain turut mencemooh Nabi. Uh, hal ini kerana mereka tidak dapat melupakan ajaran yang telah diajar oleh nenek moyang mereka. Tapi peristiwa yang dapat peristiwa yang kita dapat selepas itu adalah uh, ramai daripada mereka juga uh, mula belajar dan mengkaji buku wujud Allah Subhanahu taala dan untuk mendekatkan diri mereka dengan Allah Subhanahu taala. Okay, for the last slide we will talk about education openly in Madinah. So the place having choose is Mosque Nabawi. So when we talk about the mosque, it will remain as a function as the community development center. For Muslim, we should do a lot of things at the mosque, such as reciting Quran, doing prayer like Fardu and Sunnah, uh, sharing knowledge and discussion. Okay. Uh, and this mosque has been located at the city of Madinah in the Hijaz region in Arab Saudi. Okey, selain itu, Masjid Nabawi juga telah menjalankan beberapa perkara ketika di zaman Nabi. Contohnya, Masjid Nabawi juga berfungsi sebagai uh, tempat rawatan bagi orang-orang yang tercedera daripada peperangan. Uh, selain itu, Masjid Nabawi juga menjadi tempat untuk uh, kita berbincang, berbincang untuk uh, taktik-taktik peperangan dan juga menjadi tempat untuk asrama ataupun tempat yang tempat tinggal yang diperlukan oleh orang yang tertentu. Okey, selain itu, Masjid Nabawi juga menjalankan uh, pembelajaran ataupun mengajar uh, pendakwa-pendakwa Islam sebelum mereka dihantar untuk menyebabkan dakwah. Okey, uh, contohnya, uh, contoh yang terkenal yang kita ambil adalah Abu Hurairah. Uh, dia merupakan salah seorang uh, pengumpul hadis yang terkenal kerana dia tinggal di situ untuk belajar dan mencatat segala perkara yang ataupun dikatakan oleh Nabi uh, ketika dia berada di Masjid Nabawi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Muhammad Fikri bin Zaini. Now I will present about education and Muslim nation. 
Okay, uh, concept of education in Islam is regarded as a process that involves the complete person, including the rational, spiritual, and social dimension. As noted by Sheikh Muhammad al Naki al Attas in 1979, the comprehensive and integrated approach to education in Islam is directed to the balanced growth of the total personality through training man's spirit, intellect, passion, self, feeling and bodily sense. Just that fit is infused into the whole of his personality. Okay, next. Objective of education. Qala Allah Ta'ala fi Qur'an fi Qur'an ya Aziz. Ikra' bismi rabbika allazi khalaq. Bacalah dengan nama Tuhanmu yang menciptakan. Ini adalah ayat yang pertama yang diturunkan ke atas umat manusia. Allah memerintahkan kita uh, untuk membaca. Kenapa dengan membaca? Manusia memperolehi ilmu pengetahuan. Rasulullah SAW juga bersabda, Talabul ilmu faridatan ala kulli muslim. Menentu ilmu adalah kewajipan ke atas setiap muslim. The main objective of education is to form the true and holy sharia islamiyah and strive to uphold Islam in, relig in religion of Allah. Then, to establish a great and noble personality and make people live in harmony. Okay, uh, seterusnya adalah sumber pendidikan. Sumber pendidikan yang utama adalah Al-Quran dan Hadis. Okay, next, effect of education. Kesan pendidikan antaranya adalah lahirnya ramai para ilmuwan. Contohnya Ibn Sina, pakar perubatan, kemudian Al-Kawarizmi, uh, founder of Algebra, iaitu pakar matematik dan ramai lagi para ilmu Islam. Okey, seterusnya antara kesan pendidikan adalah masyarakat hidup dalam keadaan aman dan harmoni. Disebabkan apa? Disebabkan ilmu pengetahuan. Yang mana manusia dapat membezakan yang baik dan yang buruk. Okey, kemudian wujudnya banyak teknologi-teknologi baru. Contohnya pada era Umayyah telah, uh, telah didirikan military hospital and specialist institution of disease. Uh, kemudian pada, uh, pada zaman Abbasiyah mereka membuat proses pembuatan kertas. So banyak sebenarnya banyak lagi uh, teknologi teknologi yang hebat pada zaman Umayyah dan Abbasiyah. So korang boleh search kat internet. So we have come to Qadaya Mu'asirah The contemporary issue or the current issue So the issue that I want to like highlight today is The Tahfiz school is exploitation and irrelevance These people said that Tahfiz school should be closed Because we don't need many Ustaz in this country There are enough Ustaz in this country We need more professional people uh, More skillful people uh, To develop this country The People, these people also said that the Tahfiz students have no uh, future and they can't survive in this modern society. Okay, what can I say uh, on this issue is that their argument is very weak, very weak, and they need to find more strong argument to close Tahfiz school. Actually. Nowadays, there are many Tahfiz school that provide holistic education. What is holistic education? Holistic education is uh, that they teach knowledge on, a relig on religion subjects and also being combined with the modern knowledge and subject that being teach in normal government schools. So, they didn't lack any skills and knowledge for their survival in modern society. They learn uh, religious knowledge. They learn academics. So they get, uh, they get what they should have in the normal school. So there are no issue on this. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Kita teruskan dengan isu semasa yang berkait rapat dengan topik kita. Saya rasa isu semasa yang paling sesuai dengan keadaan kita sekarang adalah online class. 
Hal ini kerana baru-baru ini negara kita telah dilanda dengan wabak COVID-19 dan banyak premis yang telah ditutup maupun sekolah, universiti dan juga tadika. Maka kerajaan telah mengumumkan satu cara untuk kita belajar tanpa ada gangguan iaitu pembelajaran secara atas talian ataupun alam maya. Okey. Dia mewujudnya uh, beberapa kebaikan dan juga uh, keburukan. Kebaikannya cara pembelajaran kita lebih fleksibel. Kita boleh belajar secara menghantar video atau membuat live. Jika dahulu kita perlu datang ke tempat itu dan juga belajar. Jika sekarang kita uh, guru-guru dapat uh, membuat video dan hantar kepada student untuk dia dengari dan difahami. Juga juga guru juga boleh um, membuat uh, rakaman langsung live untuk dapat uh, melihat pelajar-pelajar mereka bila mereka juga membuka uh, kamera laptop korang, laptop mereka. So, uh, keburukannya mungkin ketika berlakunya pelajar secara langsung ataupun secara live, mungkin ada segelintir pada pelajar-pelajar Malaysia ini menutup ataupun uh, menutup kamera dan juga tidur. Mungkin ada yang tidur, mungkin ada yang ponteng, yang tidak fokus. Hal ini tidak memberi secara patut komitmen dalam pengajaran mereka. Jika kita, uh, jika secara pengajaran yang dahulu, kita akan berhadapan dengan guru. So, kita akan memberi satu patut komitmen kita dalam pengajaran. Jika di alam maya ini, kita boleh menipu ataupun tidak berlaku jujur. So, hal ini boleh menimbulkan... Uh, isu ketidakkejujuran pada diri pada itu tersebut so kita perlu ingat bahawa untuk ilmu itu adalah kewajipan bagi seorang muslim kalau buat ilmi faridatul ala kuli muslim wajib pada lelaki dan juga perempuan so kita perlu menjaga adat kita sebagai pelajar dengan guru kita supaya ilmu yang kita dapat itu dapat dihirai dan dapat manfaatnya sekali insyaAllah so ok everyone so we move to the last current issue Uh, which is Al-Qadha and Masrah so the last issue is about yeah we can call it as a bit sensitive issue okay so it is about the Islamic subject as well so the previous prime minister which is Tun Dr. Mahathir has stated that um, Islamic subject in school has turned um, um, the school the primary school or the, scan- the secondary school as a religious school uh, so you can read Ya, ikatan guru-guru Muslim Malaysia menyela kenyataan Perdana Menteri menyatakan sekolah agama macam berulang di sekolah agama. Okay, so you guys can read it and try to think about it. It is um, is the argument is really clear. Is the argument are made sense? Okay, so you guys can think about the current issue and we can talk a little bit more uh, in the class okay so yes this is about this some subject in school is it relevant or not yeah as we muslim we know islam is the way of life so islam is sure from uh, from we wake up until we sleep yes islam has told us all of that so islam is not a spiritual okay So try to think about it. Is it relevant? Is the argument is really make sense? And what's your opinion about the current issue? So everyone, thank you. Assalamualaikum. That's all from us. Hope you can enjoy about this. Um. So Salim. Hmm. Assalamualaikum. Salim. Okay. So yeah. Bye. Assalamualaikum. That's all from us. Thank you, everyone.